Hey guys, so we're going to start working through this control code. I'm going to kind of step through it uh, function by function, line by line of sort, just so you can understand a bit more what's going on and how you might need to change it around for your own for your own uh, configuration of robot. So the first one I want to go through is the joint angles function, which is basically the inverse kinematics of your robot. Uh, this is probably one of the more important ones, I would say. If you stuff this up, it's, it's just going to go nowhere you really need to get this one right uh, so I'll, I'll make sure uh, hopefully after watching this you'll understand a bit more what's going on so what this function actually does it basically takes two points so A and B which are uh, it's just a simple row vector just a coordinate as such and basically it returns um, in this case Q1 and Q2 which are the encoder count values how many how many encoder ticks that each motor must move in order to uh, go from point A to point B. Okay, so you can read through that little help there if you want, um, or you can simply type in help and then the function. Okay, so the first thing I set up is the gear ratio parameters. These things are you gonna. These are the things you're gonna have to work out yourself. So on our design robot, we've got a using the turret and the, the spur gear that we're using. We've got a gear ratio of seven to one. So as I say there, we then had to go work this one out. So the ratio of a prismatic arm was for us was one millimeter to nine encoder counts. Um, you're going to have to go work that out yourself. So one way to do it is to go, okay, move your prismatic arm 50, 50 counts or uh, 50 encoder counts, measure the distance, and then work back to what uh, one mil is or what one encoder count does. It's up to you. So I did it this way, just for math reasons. Okay, so the first thing you need to do is you need to work out your current joint angles. So this is where the inverse kinematics is. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to go over to PowerPoint. Okay. And basically, so for Revolute Prismatic Arm, this is the inverse kinematics. So if you're at point X, C, Y, C, to work out theta 1, you simply need to do A tan to Y, C, X, C. Um, I'm using the MATLAB. Uh, convention of doing Y first and then X. You might be familiar with X then Y. It doesn't really matter, just make sure that you understand that MATLAB does Y first then X. And then the the distance out of this R is simply the square root of XC R squared plus YC squared. The square root of that whole thing. Um, pretty straightforward hopefully. Okay. Uh, so going back to the code now so that's basically what we've got here. You notice that Q1 current, okay, so my inverse kinematics is simply A tan 2 and then Y, the Y coordinate, or the second coordinate of A, the second, sorry, second element of A, and then the first element of A, okay, or the first element of B, and the, or the second element of B and the sec uh, first element of B, depending on what you're trying to work out. So I've got Q1 current um, is A tan 2 of Y X. Okay, that's what I'm doing. And then Q2 current equals the square root of A1, so the first element, so the X times X plus Y times Y. Okay, so that's what they're doing. So that's the exact same as this here. At y, A tan 2, Y, X, R is square root of X squared plus Y squared. Okay, so that's all I'm doing in this type of code. I'm doing the exact same thing here. Okay but I'm doing it for the new one. Okay, so I'll explain what I'm doing there now, okay, with a bit of an example. Okay, so basically Q1 current, Q1 current, so the Q1 current and Q2 current are working out the joint angles for this point here, this the initial point that you're at. Okay, so that's basically working out how much theta 1 would be and how far R is along to reach that point. Then basically what I'm working out again is I'm doing the exact same thing using the inverse kinematics to work out the second point, okay? Work out what the joint angles of it would be. So in other words, Q1 here and R along here, okay? So that's all I'm doing. Okay, so basically, so Q1 current, Q2 current, Q1 new and Q2 new. So the first point, in other words, A, so you, that's why I'm using A only in this one. And then the second one uh, for the new point, I'm using B, okay, the point you want to move to. We then go along and find the encoder values, okay. 
Now, this is what you're doing is you're basically going, okay, subtract the new one from the old one. Okay. That's that's all you're effectively doing. Don't worry about this at the moment. This is just to get it into the right dimensions of degrees. Okay. But basically what you're doing is you're going Q1 new minus Q2 current, uh, Q1 current. And the same thing for Q2. Q2 new minus Q2 current. Okay. So what that is doing, essentially going, okay. So basically what you're doing is you're finding the total angle in here. So basically you have this angle here, theta 1, and Q1, and to find the total you subtract the 2. Okay. So you subtract your new one from your old one. Okay. And same thing for the distance. Uh, in the example I've got here, the distance is the same, um, or roughly the same. It's basically a mirror image, sort of. Okay, so basically what you're doing is you're just subtracting, okay, what's the length I need along here, and what is the length currently. That's all you're doing, okay, in that section, that the initial section. What I'm doing here for Q1 current is this will spit out, so this is working in radians, MATLAB works in generally in radians, and so I just have to change that to degrees by timesing on 180 and dividing by pi, okay, um, and then I times by my gear ratio, okay. Make sense? Sweet. Okay, the reason I don't really need to um, change Q2 new uh, uh, Q2 uh, from radians to uh, degrees is because I'm basically actually working in millimeters because this is technically a length, this is an angle, okay? So for, that's only for Revolute Prismatic. If you're doing a Revolute Revolute, you're going to have to change it. Okay, so basically what I'm doing is this one's finding an angle, this one's finding a length, so this one's tech. This one's in millimeters, so I don't actually have to change it from radius to degrees. Okay? But what I do have to do is times by my ratio, which I worked out before, how I explained earlier. And same in Q1, I'm timesing by the ratio, the appropriate ratio. So seven, uh, 7 in here and 9 in here. Okay? And then I simply round up to the nearest whole number. Okay? Simply because the taco limit uh, thing basically only accepts whole integers, so it's just as easy just to round it. Okay, and that's the end of the function. So again, a brief summary, what, it, what it's done. Ratios, inverse kinematics is in here, okay? And you're working out your current ones, your current joint angles, and then your new joint angles, and you're subtracting the two, okay? You're subtracting the new one from the old one, and then applying your gear ratios and making sure that it's in degrees, okay? And then rounding up. That's all this function is doing, okay? But what you need to do is you got to, uh, a computer obviously is only, computers are great, except that they do exactly what you tell them. So it doesn't know if you've made an error, so you really, you do need a sanity, ch sanity check or hand check as such, desk check, it's probably the best word, desk check your, um, desk check your code. So I'm going to quickly do that, how you can do that for this one here. So let's go, next one. Okay, so let's say our current point is x is 100 and y is 100. So that point up there is 100, 100. So to find the current angle, a tan 2 of a y, x, you get 45 degrees or pi on, pi on 4. Okay, and your length current is 100 squared plus 100 squared, square root of that whole thing, and you get about 141, 140 roughly. Okay, then you go, go work out your new point. Now do this all by hand, and, and you'll see what I'll do in a minute. Okay, so you basically go, new point is 100, and I'm saying, uh, sorry, 100, negative 100, and theta is equal to a tan 2 y x, and you get negative 45 degrees in this case. Okay, and again, the length of it is simply 140, 41.4 again. Okay, probably should have millimeters on both of those. And that's to be expected, it's simply a mirror image, so you're going to get the negative angle but the same length, okay? And then when you go work out, okay, so you find your difference in displacement, okay? So theta diff is gonna be new minus current, in this case, negative 90 degrees, or you can just have the magnitude of 90, but you gotta make sure that, keep that sign there, okay? Don't find the absolute value. So theta diff is new minus current, negative 90 in this case, which makes sense, it's gotta rotate negative 90 degrees, I guess, um, and apply any gear ratios, Okay, uh, and sorry, radius, the length is R nu minus R current, which is zero, which is again to be expected. Um, the length is the same. Then you've got to apply any of your gear ratios. So theta move is technically the difference 
minus the gear ratio of theta one, or in this case just the rotational. And if you, for us, it's seven. Our gear ratio is seven, so you get seven. That technically should be negative. Okay, seven times ninety is six hundred and thirty negative. Okay, and then move is RDF minus the displacement. Our gear ratio's displacement was one millimeter was nine encoder counts, and so you simply have zero times nine, which again is obviously zero. Okay, so that's how you can guess check it. And then what you want to what you can do is you can simply call your function. So we can say Q1, Q2, okay, and let's go ooh, actually. Sorry, let's first set up A and B. So A is equal to 100, 100. B equals 100, negative 100. Okay, so I'm just using the command line just to quickly check this code. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go Q1, Q2 equals joint angles. Okay, A comma B, making sure that it's all right thing. Let's do that. You notice Q1 is negative 630, which is to be expected, and Q2 should be zero. Zero, okay? So that's a nice easy way of just guess checking it. So just a e relatively easy example like that, and uh, just making sure that what you expect to get, is, uh, what, you, what you believe you should get is what you're actually getting with your thing. Uh, for those, so you, you may need to reconfigure this code, especially if, you do, especially if you're doing a Revolut Revolut. First off, if you're doing Revolut, this will need a change. Okay, to be an appropriate gear ratio of whatever you're using. Actually, these are probably gonna change for most people's robots, actually, configurations, because you probably don't have the exact same. Um, you then need to work out your current, you'll need to work out inverse kinematics. Um, fortunately, if you're doing Revolut Prismatic, it's probably gonna be pretty similar, unless you have a bit of um, offsets in there, a few offsets, which you may. Uh, but yeah, for Revolut Revolut, you're gonna have to change this one uh, significantly, and this one, this one should be actually, or oh, would be pretty, oh, probably not actually. Um, but yeah, you're gonna have to change both of these. But the simple thing about that is really you're just doing that, you only have to find it that once and then you just apply it twice. And then this should stay roughly the same, except if you do have a revolute, revolute, you're gonna have to change in here to have a times by 180 and pi like in Q1 for Q2. Okay, but other than that, um, it should be it should be the same. It should be the same sort of process. Okay, I hope that helps for that one. Um, I'll go on to the following function in a minute.